Welcome to our virtual ghost tour of the Colored School in the Peel Building. The Peel Center is the former site of the male and female Colored School Number no. 1 from 1878 to 1889. We will be moving throughout the three floors of the building, occupying all of the spaces and rooms used for classroom instruction and offices. This digital model shows the Peel Building as it was in 2017 while undergoing interior renovations. Our model was created using 3D laser scanning technology and point cloud processing software. Follow us on a journey back in time as we imagine these spaces buzzing with the activity of 19th century classroom life. This block, where male and female colored grammar in high school number one was located, was primarily considered an industrial area in the 1870s. To the north lies one of Baltimore's industrial older districts, made of machine shops, gas works, iron foundries, carriage factories, stables, and warehouses running along the Jones Falls. This area will become an open cesspool of industrial waste and human filth. What kind of sounds and smells do you think students would have experienced in the classroom based on what was happening outside of the building? The school's principal, George Staley, and others call the colored high in grammar school unhealthy and even dangerous. In 1885, the layout of the class size of students in the Peel Building is described in some detail as follows. First floor, 140 pupils in three rooms that can accommodate 100. Second floor, 235 students in five rooms, two of them very small. Third floor, 200 pupils in four rooms, three of which should have 35 at the most. Other spaces, principal and teacher's rooms, used for pupils. Inadequate colored school accommodations, Baltimore Sun, February 18, 1885. The first diplomas given to African-American students graduating from the colored high school occurred in a ceremony officiated by Mayor Benjamin Latrobe in 1889. There were nine graduates, seven girls and two boys. Gertrude and Nellie Anderson, Gertrude Deaver, Fanny McCabe, Molly Taylor, Violet Thompson, William Murray, Walter Scott, and Mamie Neal. Several of those graduates attended male and female colored school number one in the Peel Building before eventually graduating from the Colored High School or Douglas Institute. The first seven graduates of the Colored High School passed with an average grade above 85%, which entitled them, quote, to teach without further examinations, end quote. In the spring of that year, Baltimore City Council passed an ordinance empowering the Board of Commissions to confer testimonials on the pupils of the Colored High School, the same as upon pupils of the Baltimore City College and the female high school. Baltimore Sun, May 21st, 1889. Before this ordinance, only white teachers were allowed to teach in the colored schools. Students attending male and female colored grammar in high school number one face significant challenges in order to attend school, such as arranging transportation to get to school and not attending school during the harvest season. Have you faced any similar challenges in order to attend school? A major organization that championed equitable education of black students in Baltimore City was the Mutual United Brotherhood of Liberty. The Brotherhood of Liberty was founded by Reverend Harvey Johnson and several clergymen and was the first civil rights organization in Baltimore and one of the first in the nation. In the late 1890s, the Mutual United Brotherhood of Liberty undertook numerous protests against educational inequality, 
eventually convincing the city to fund the new African American high school and staff it with black teachers, colored teachers for colored schools. Isaac Myers, an entrepreneur, activist, and labor organizer, also campaigned for black students in Baltimore by supporting petitions for increased access to education and the new colored high school. Students attending male and female colored grammar in high school number one encountered poor building and working conditions within the school, such as overcrowded classrooms, poor ventilation, and excessive heat. In 1879, overcrowding in another colored grammar school on Saratoga Street forced the BCPS school board to relocate up to 161 students to two other colored schools, including the Peel Building. What is the impact on student learning based on conditions inside of the building? The building occupied by the Colored High and Grammar School, a male colored school number one, is not a suitable one in scarcely any respect. It is not well arranged and some of the rooms are too small and very badly lighted. In some of the rooms on the lower floor, it is scarcely possible to see sufficiently well to read on cloudy days. If, in case of fire or for any other cause, it became necessary to move the children quickly out of the building, great difficulty would be experienced on account of the narrow stairway down which pupils on the third floor have to pass in order to get out of the building. Annual Report of School Commissioners, 1883. Gendered education, separating boys and girls in the classroom, was the norm. During the early 1880s, the building's conditions became so deplorable at College School No. 1 that the decision was made to build a new school. In 1881, all female and the youngest male students were moved to the new location on 61 Saratoga Street, where the remaining male students were left behind in the College School No. 1. The new location had better facilities with improved lighting, better air quality, and more teachers. There is more emphasis on educating girls and young women because of the expectation that they will become nurses, teachers, and domestic workers, all of which required mastery of certain subjects. Boys, however, were expected to do industrial or agricultural work that didn't require as much formal education. Do you agree with the notion that gendered education, separating boys and girls in the classroom, can contribute to student success today? Do you think that it makes a difference? Would you like to know more about male and female colored school number one? Follow our research and contribute your story on School One, our new microsite linked to the Peel Center website at http colon backslash backslash www.thepeelcenter.org slash school one. Credit and acknowledgments for the male and female colored grammar and high school one at the Peel Center exhibition. This exhibit was created with archival support from our research scholars. Tanika D. Berkeley, MAA, research coordinator and curator, male and female colored grammar and high school number one at the Peel Center Research Project. Dr. Iris L. Barnes, curator, Lily Carol Jackson Civil Rights Museum, Executive Director of Hosanna School Museum in Darlington, Maryland. Dr. Mary Ellen Hayward, Architectural Historian, Preservation Consultant and Museum Consultant. Member, Board of Directors of the Peel Center for Baltimore History and Architecture. Lisa Rose Lemson, Lord Baltimore Research Fellow for the Maryland Historical Society and PhD candidate in American History at Marquette University, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dean Krimmel, Interpretive Planner and Exhibit Developer, Member, 
Board of Directors of the Peel Center for Baltimore History and Architecture, Dr. Brian Morrison, Founder and President, the William J. Watkins Senior Educational Institute, Incorporated. Exhibit text compiled by Tanika D. Berkeley, MAA. This project has been financed in part with state funds from the Maryland Heritage Areas Authority and instrumentality of the state of Maryland. However, the contents and opinions do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the Maryland Heritage Areas Authority.